If you want to build an actually useful Python project, then this video is for you because not only you'll learn how to develop a Python project and how to structure it, we will also learn how to deploy it with Docker, which is the most popular technology yet for packaging applications and deploying them on your local server or in elsewhere in the cloud. So welcome to a special video where we will learn how to build a Python project mixed with Docker and the goal of the project is actually going to be useful because we are going to build a project that will know to watch for mp4 files in a directory that you decide and it will convert them to mp3 files. Now I'm sure that this has been an action that you've done at least once in your life so why not automate it with python why not use the python skills that you earned so far and take it to a level where you could actually build a useful project for yourself so this hour is going to be very cool we are going to learn how to write such a project and then in the second part of it we are going to write a docker file and deploy it on our system so it will continuously run in the background so let's get into it this is what we are going to enable in this cool Python project. We are going to enable converting mp4 files to mp3 files by only doing a drag and drop. And you can see here down below that I have an mp4 file and I also have another directory that is called mp3q. Now the second that I'm going to move this file to here, then it is automatically going to create a new file with the mp3 conversion. And on the left pane, we are going to see the logs of the actions that will just start happening one by one. So I move it and you can see that I already start seeing some logs here. And if I go to the mp3q directory, then you can see that here is our original video file and inside the mp3 files here is our file and it is named myvideo.mp3 so this is going to be the project that we will build with docker and it is going to be very useful for automation and also there are going to be a lot of learning how docker works and how to create these advanced programs with python so let's get into it so here's our IDE and we are going to write the project with PyCharm in this video. Of course you can use any IDE that you want, but the three important components that we'd like to include in our system would be Python of course and PyCharm and also in Docker. If you have trouble installing one of these and you basically don't have one of them, then I'm going to provide the relevant links in the description. So we want to start by actually writing the basic way of writing such a program like we saw in the presentation. We could go ahead and actually start with a minimal project that will just take an mp4 file as a source argument and an mp3 file will be the destination. So it, it's like another argument for where to store the mp3 file and that will be it. It won't have the um, future of watching directories because that is a simpler approach how to build such a program. Now there is going to be a cool library that we are also going to see throughout the building process of this project which is named MoviePy and it really helps us to automate things related to videos etc. So let's go ahead and start with having a basic file that I could go ahead and name mp3 underscore conv like converter but shorter way and here our first function could really be a function that will create the destination directory because we saw in the presentation earlier on how we store the mp3 files in a dedicated directory so it makes sense to create this directory and I'm just going to go ahead and import the OS library for that we are going to rely on this library a lot for calculating paths and so let's go ahead and start with a function like create destination directory and it's not going to receive anything yet and I'm just going to go ahead and say that our mp3 path will be let's call it mp3 dir and I'm just going to join some paths here let's say that we'd like to create the mp3 files directory here in our project directory so I'm going to go ahead and say os.path.join and it's going to be current directory and I'm going to join it a new directory which will be mp3 files and then I'm going to call the make dirs 
function and I'm just going to create this directory by passing in mp3 dir like that and maybe you would like to return the outcome here because it's going to be helpful and maybe to write logs etc in the future so I'm going to go ahead and run this project but first we want to call this function so let for that let's also go ahead and have a new main file that from here we could go ahead and import everything from the mp3 con file and then if name equals main then we are just going to go ahead and say create destination zero like that we are going to call the function so now if I run our file here then it's going to run successfully and obviously we are going to see a new directory here now it could also be a great idea to throw some print message about the directory that has been created so I'm just going to go ahead and say here print a directory has been created and I'm just going to refer to the directory like that alright so now that we have reached this point then we'd also like to go ahead and write a function that will really do the conversion for us so like I said earlier on there is a wonderful library in Python named MoviePy and I'm just going to import some of the sub libraries out of it so I'm just going to go ahead and say from MoviePy dot library editor excuse me import video file clip now we are going to talk about this class in a bit but first things first you really want to ensure that you run pip install moviepy so that you won't receive any errors when you write this line here in this file and as you can see for me it is requirement already satisfied now let's talk about this class here this is a sp special class from the moviepy library that receives an argument that is mandatory which is going to be a reference to the mp4 file and it already knows automatically to capture only the audio only the voice from a given mp4 file and this is going to be a magic class for us because it is just going to do the trick for us quite quite easily you can see how many methods this class includes okay and that is very nice and as you can see if we look at the content of this class it has one mandatory um, parameter that is called file name so we are going to pass it all right so now let's go ahead and create a new function here that i will name convert and of course i will receive a parameter that i could name file name just like we saw in the inner class and then i'm going to go ahead and create a video file clip instance and that's going to be equal to video file clip that we imported and then I'm just going to go ahead and pass in file name that will be received from this function and this is going to be our instance that we are going to play with now with this instance we could actually easily see some of the very valuable properties you can see that if I go ahead and use the dot sign you can see how many options I have here and you can already see that we have a property that is sort of storing only the audio of the um, video and that is very valuable so I'm going to take this and I'm going to assign this to a variable that I will name audio like that now what we don't know behind the scenes is that the audio reference is also happened to be an additional class that is stored as audio file clip so that is wonderful because the movie pile library as you can see has a lot of abstractions how to manage um, videos and audios and it really helps automate editing your videos or doing stuff with your videos doing different cool things so now I'm going to go ahead and refer to it as an instance of audio file clip so let's go ahead and comment this out returns an audio file clip instance like this and then we are going to rely on some of its methods we are going to go ahead and say audio dot write audio file and then we have to pass in our destination file now in this function we currently don't have the destination file on our hand but if we would use the create destination directory inside of this function 
then we would have a reference to where the destination file is going to be. So I'm going to do that for now, okay? I'm going to go ahead and say that our destination directory is equal to create destination directory like that because that was the reason before that I returned the mp3 directory from this function. Now I close the terminal down below temporarily because we don't have to use it right now. But now we want to understand how this method works here. If we use control B to inspect it, then we can see that it receives a file name attribute. And you can also see down below that it says name of the output file. So this means that we have to refer to the destination file already. We can't just give it a directory and expect the magic happen that it will create the file there and it will create a random file name or something like that. We have to provide the full information. So go back to mp3 con file. Then I'm going to prepare a new path that will be our destination path. So I'm going to go ahead and say destination full path, okay? Differentiating from the dir, this was only the directory that we store the mp3 files. I'm going to go ahead and say again os.path.join and that's going to include the destination directory, of course. And for now, let's say that I'd like to name my mp3 file filename.mp3 like this, okay? Just for testing reasons. We are not really going to leave it as it is. So now I'm going to go ahead and use this in the audio, write audio file method. I'm going to go ahead and pass our, excuse me, destination full path. And I'm also going to pass here codec equals to mp3 just an additional attribute that we need to pass into this method. So now that we have done this, then I'm just going to go ahead and say video file clip dot close. Now these classes are behaving pretty, pretty similar to how in interaction with a text file is working with Python. In there, we use context manager to close the interaction with our file. But right now we are just using the close method to close the interaction with the video file clip, which is the mp4 file that we are going to work with. Now, not sure if you noticed or not, but in the middle of our recording, I just moved an mp4 file for testing reasons, and we are going to just pass in this one as a reference so that we could see if the conversion is going to work for us. So let's go now and try to call this function from our main file. Now, if you remember, our main file still calls the create destination dir function, and we really don't need to call this anymore from here. Because if you remember, we moved the call of this function to here. So I'm just going to go ahead and say convert, and I'm going to refer to my mp4 file like that. And now it's about time to test our program for the first time. So we opened our terminal here, and I'm just going to go ahead and say python main.py you can see that we have some problems. Now, not sure if you are familiar with the OS library, but actually the make dirs function expects for the directories to not being created already. And that is why we see file exist mp3 files. Now, Python probably refers to the objects that it needs to create as files, even if it's directories, because We'd like to create a directory in this case, so it's a bit confusing the, the exception that we receive here, but we actually can go ahead and pass in here exist ok equals to true, because by default it's turned off. And if you want to know more about the OS library, then I have a dedicated tutorial exactly on this library, which is going to be really helpful for you, because it's a very popular library that is used in a lot of Python projects. All right, so now that we have done this, then we could go back to testing our program and you can see that now it starts to work. We really see some progress bar about how the file has been processed and that we see an mp3 file being created right here. Now, if we open the directory, then you can see that we really have an mp3 file and that the conversion has happened successfully. The file has been converted successfully. All right, so now that we have done this, then we really want to enable storing the same file name in our conversion, just as the same as the received file, as the source mp4 file. So this means that 
If a file name is called gym video, like in my case, then the mp3 file name that is going to be created should have the same name as well, so that we will know which file was converted from which file, okay? It totally makes sense. So this means that we have to play around with our file name that we receive here as a parameter and we just have to create a new file name which be the destination file name. Now the attribute that is passed from the main file is an argument with the mp4 at the end. So that means that I could actually catch the extension of this file and just replace this to mp3. So I'm just going to go ahead and say here something like the following. There is a special um, function inside the OS library that knows to catch the uh, extension of a file. So that means that it makes sense to have a maybe a dedicated function for that that will replace the extension for us. So I'm just going to go ahead and say change extension and then I'm also going to catch here file name and then I can go ahead and say a slash b and by purpose I'm using here references to, to two variables so you will see the results of the function that I'm calling right now inside the OS library so that is going to be equal to os dot pat dot split text and I'm just going to refer to the file name. Now you will see that the A will be the file name without extension and the B will be only the extension. All right, so we are going to see this in action. I'm just going to go ahead and say return A slash B and comma B, B like that. And then I'm just going to go ahead and try to test this function here in an environment that I really don't, will not like to affect the program itself. So that is why actually in the main.py file we have this um, thing here or we could just comment this out and again try to pass in a file name. Let's see how it behaves, all right? So besides really converting, we are just really debugging and try to add a new feature here. And that's why I comment this out and I say something like print mp3.conv mp3 underscore conv dot a change extension we don't really change the extension yet but let's pass in here gymvideo.mp4 as well and if I call our file then you can see that we receive really the expected result so this is a perfect scenario where you catch both the file name and the extension in two separated variables and so let's go ahead and take um, advantage of this behavior so I'm going to go ahead to our mp3 conv file again and I'm just going to say file and then extension for more meaningful variables and then I'm going to go ahead and simply say and I'm going to remove this line as well and I ju I'm just going to go ahead and return an f string and I'm going to refer to the file only and I will just say dot mp3 like this okay because we catch the file name we throw away the extension and then basically we change it with the mp3 now in order to um, other developers to understand that you are not referring to this variable this could be actually an underscore okay so that uh, other developers could understand that this function really uh, returns two values that you have to unpack but I'm only unpacking one of them and that is the file and now if I go ahead and change my destination full path from os.pat.join destination directory and then refer to change extension and then pass in file name then it should do the trick for us now I'm going to go ahead and simply try to convert again the same file and if you remember, we already have the file name.mp3 here. We also expect to see gymvideo.mp3 in this directory once I run this program again. And you can see that this is exactly the result here. We have an mp3 file being added just as the same name as the mp4 file. All right, so now that we have reached so far, we are going to write some logic to monitor a directory. And monitoring a directory means watching for changes in a directory so this means that in each point we'd like to 
see if a new file has been added and if so we'd like to convert it to mp3 that is the drag and drop behavior that we want to have so in order to maintain some code related to directory monitoring then we are just going to go ahead and create a separated python file and it totally makes sense to have it under a python file that i could name something like dear monitor something like that okay so here we could use again some functions that will help us to monitor for changes in the file now i'm going to use class this time and i'm just going to call this class dear monitor like that and I'm just going to go ahead and design it in a way so it will be helpful because we'll probably have some methods that will use the same argument that we'd like to pass from outside just like in here okay here to be honest we have twice the file name but we are going to convert this to a class in the future and it's going to be cool to see how we could do that so it will be a more maintainable code all right, so here we could say that inside our init function, we could actually receive a dir path, okay? And this means just a single path to a directory that it will watch for changes. And I'm just going to go ahead and say self dot dir path equals to dir um, underscore path. And that's enough for now if we'd like to receive more attributes from outside when we instantiate a class then we will add more attributes in the future. Okay, so now we will design a new method that will tell us how many files exist in the monitor in the directory that we watch for. So I'm just going to go ahead and say a new method here that I could name list files. And here we are going to use again the OS library, see how useful this library actually is. And this is the library that will help us to list the files in the um, directory that we watch so i'm just going to go ahead and try to return here a list with um, all the files now i'm going to use some typings here and i'm just going to say to this method that i'm returning a list and notice how i'm using the list with a um, lowercase l that is only supported from tri python 3.11 and above you might want to do something like from typing import list if this syntax does not work for you and just change it like that okay i'm going to leave it as it is and remove everything from here and continue on all right so now we are going to go ahead and say for file in os.list dir and i'm going to obviously refer to the directory path that is accessible because it is an attribute in an object and then i'm going to go ahead and say that i'd like to catch all the files now just to test ourselves okay i'm going to go ahead and say print file and i'm going to go ahead and return just an empty list because we must do that otherwise it is going to complain and right now i'm just going to go ahead and say d1 equals to dear monitor i'm going to run this file separately okay and the directory that i'll watch is going to be a temporary directory that i will create in the directory of the project in just a bit okay and then i'm going to go ahead and say list files like that so let's go ahead and do that okay i'm going to go ahead and create a directory named tmp and then i'm just going, going to go ahead and create just random files for now okay it doesn't have to be mp4 files we are just adding a new feature so let's test ourselves a bit i'm going to add an ahtml i'm going to add the javascript file no yeah, actually let's go and new try to add a new python file like that okay this should be enough three two files are enough okay so taking a look in that file that should be a great start to test ourselves so i'm just going to go ahead and run the dear monitor file separately not the main.py file and you can see the result down below we only have we have the reference for the um, files here now it might be a greater idea to have the full path to the files so that we won't only see the file name and the way that we can do that is besides printing the file we could just join the original dear path to the file so it will be something like os.path.join and then i will remove the closer parentheses and i will move it to here and then i will just say self.dearpath comma 
and then it will just join these two here and now if I run this then you can see how the result is different now I have full references to the files that exist inside the directory that I monitor so called okay so now besides printing this it totally makes sense to add it to an empty list because if we add it to an empty list outside of our for loop then it will be the list that we'd like to return so we could go ahead and say files equals to an empty list and besides just printing it I could just go ahead and take this entire expression and assign it to a variable say full file path and then I could just add files.append full file path like the following and then finally I could return files besides obviously returning an empty list and now I'd like to go ahead and show the result of whatever this function returns so this means that I could print this entire um, method that I call here and we should be seeing a, a list with a three, two elements right so if I run the dear monitor file again then you can see a perfect result which is what we want so this is a valuable method that we are going to rely on it for sure alright so now that we have done this then it makes sense to create an additional method that will help us to continuously watch this monitor now usually when you want to run programs without stopping or unless you interrupt it with something like Control c then it makes sense to wrap your logic under while true and that means that it is going to act as a program that does not have an end it it just runs forever okay and that's exactly what we want because that's also sort of um achieving the full potential of a docker container where you just like to um, execute your container and just run it forever and keep always watching the directory that the container will receive as an argument which directory it should watch so we are going to go ahead and use a new method here that we could name watch and here we are going to start writing the real logic for monitoring the directory which in our case will be dear path so I'm just going to go ahead and first of all before entering the while true here I'm just going to go ahead and say something like this and I'm going to go ahead and capture the files status in a directory um, for once before entering the while true and then we will continuously update this list with the updates okay and see how it's going to work here so inside our watch method we are going to go ahead and say files status is equal to um, list files that we have just created okay so it will be self dot list files so here we maintain a list with two files right now and then I'm going to go ahead and say while true then here's our our logic going to be I, I remove these lines outside of the class because we are not going to use these anymore besides we we are going to use the watch method and test it in the main.py file so first of all in order to not have too much load in our program then it makes sense to watch the directory every x seconds and this amount could be actually um, something that you could set up for me i think i'm um, slipping five seconds before watching for changes in a directory sounds a um, good value so i'm going to go to the first lines and I'm going to import the time library because time library has the um, sleep function which is useful for waiting a few seconds before just running the whole thing again so I'm going to sleep for five seconds at first and then I'm going to watch for changes and watch for changes means that I'm going to list the files again okay I'm going to go ahead and say current status current file status okay and that's going to be again equal to self dot list files but this time we could actually have three elements okay say that we also have a c dot mp4 file here here currently we have a b and here i could already have the um, c so i'm just writing some comments so it will be easy for us to understand what we are trying to do here so say that we are having a b and c this time so that means that I'd like to have also a list 
with um, new files that are um, just added to the directory that we watch. And this simply means that we need to find the difference between two given lists. And this means we want to generate a new list with only c.mp4. The easiest way in my opinion to do this is by converting these to sets because sets support subtraction and we will see how it looks in just a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and say new files equals to set and by the way sets are just unordered versions of lists whenever you call a list set whenever you print it you might always receive a different ordering in the elements that it includes all right so i'm just seeing this for these that are encountering the set type of variable for the first time all right so i'm going to go ahead and say set current file status minus set files status like that and let's see the results now okay i'm just going to go ahead and say print new files and we are just you know what we are just going to write again a new class here excuse me for deleting this earlier on i'm going to pass in tmp and i'm just going to call the watch method like that so let's see how this will behave all right i'm going to go to my terminal here and i'm just going to call the dear monitor directory only okay so I'm going to go ahead and use python dearmonitor.py. Now we are not going to see anything unless we move a new file to the directory that we watch. So in order to ease our life here, then I'm just going to go ahead and, and you can see that it starts working. We see an empty set because there are no new files, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and create a new file here. I could make this c. I don't know, um, py as well. And we just created a new file, right? And you can see that now we have a new file. So this totally means that it changes for, it watches for new files. But now we have another problem because the second that we have a new file created, we are going to process it and create the mp3 file from it. So this means that we could only have one output for new files. We don't want the Python program to think that this is a new file forever. We want the Python program to think that this is a new file in only one interval, all right? Because otherwise, this file is going to be converted to mp3 file forever, and that is a bug in our program. So what that means, it means that we need to update the files status list from the while true loop so that Python would understand that in the next interval it is a not new file. So we are going to close this and then we basically going to say here in the comments that here will be the logic to convert the new files and once we completed the conversion of new files then we are going to update the files status list that is right outside of the while true loop. So this is going to be something like this. We are going to go ahead and say files status is equal to current files status like that. And that is just going to have a new list. It's going to override whatever the value of the file status is and then it will not be recognized as a new file anymore so now let's test ourselves all right we are just going to go ahead and say again python dear monitor.py and again this time we are only going to see empty sets because there are no new files identified so i'm going to go ahead and create a d.py file and then we are going to see it printed once and in the next time again we should see an empty set and that is perfect okay so the place that we have the print line we will just call the functions that will do the conversion for us okay so that's the logic that our project is going to be based on okay so now that we reached so far then let's really start seeing some results in action so first things first the list files 
method sort of has um, some bugs because we really watch all the types of files. We are only interested, obviously, watching new MP4 files. So that could mean that maybe we'd like to receive an additional attribute in our dear monitor in class. So we are just going to go ahead and say here ext and i'm going to provide a default value for that maybe you'll use this program for watching i don't know um, different kinds of files but i'm just going to go ahead and say that the extension that we should be watching should be dot mp4 like that and then i'm just going to go ahead and say self dot ext equals to the uh, received a parameter from outside and now this list files method needs a bit customization now if you remember earlier on we had a nice trick capturing the extension of a path so we could just go ahead and say file comma extension is equal to os.path.split text and then I'm going to provide here a path. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. And this will capture the extension. So, so now I could go ahead and say, if extension is equal to self.extension, we actually named it ext for <laughs> just a shorter variable. Only in that case, add the files to the list that we return okay so this way we only watch for mp4 files that are added okay so if there are new mp4 files that are added then we really like to have some um, conversions and this really means that i need to basically remove these four files from here to have a real testing of our um, program so i'm just going to go ahead and really do that and then I'm going to call the functions that were responsible to do the actual conversion. So here, besides printing the new files, I'm just going to um, go ahead and iterate over the new files. Now, we should be um, assuming that two files could be added at once. So that is why I'm going to iterate over the new files. And if you remember, the outcome of this expression here is a set as well. And I could actually allow myself to convert this to a list and then I could iterate over the new files. So I am going to go ahead and say for file, excuse me, for new file in new files and um, convert. Okay. And obviously now we are going to call the conversion function and let's remember where it is located. So if you remember in the main.py file, and we had the import of mp3 conv and then we called the convert. So I'm going to go ahead and simply implement these. I'm going to um, paste the import line here and I'm going to grab in the mp3.convert expression like that. And I'm just going to um, go back to our dear monitor and I'm going to go ahead and paste this in. And obviously, this is the argument that is going to be changed. I'm going to refer to the new file and, and that's it, okay? So let's take a look again in our logic. We wait five seconds and then we see if there are any changes and then we grab a new list with the new files and then we convert the new files to mp3 and then we ensure updating the file status uh, to the current file status so that we won't have uh, always new um, files that are going to be processed to be converted. So let's clean things a bit up here. If you remember, I wrote these comments for um, showing uh, some things. And in the main.py file, which is the original file that we execute uh, that is our entry point, so to speak. I am going to go ahead and say import um, dear monitor, or actually I can say from dear monitor import the class itself, all right? And then let's see which directory we like to watch, okay? It could be anything that you wish. I'm going to call this um, dear monitor. Let's pass in temp again and just go ahead and pass in watch, all right? Now I'm going to go here. And I need to do a bit more cleanup. If you remember, we wrote these two lines outside of our class and um, for um, debugging reasons, going to clean these. And now 
this is a, a good time to test everything working together. All right, so it's in about time seeing some results in action here. So I'm going to open the terminal and I'm simply going to run our program by saying python main.py. Now, since it looks like it's hanging and doing nothing, it really is a good indication for us because it means that it works. We did not write too many logs, but we are definitely going to do that once we dive in into the program. So we could use the logger library, but I'm not really a big fan of using it when the project is not big enough. Okay, since it's still considered as a, a small medium level project, then I'm not really diving in into a complex logging using the logging library. So I will just uh, print here something like uh, the uh, mp3 converter starts, something like that, right? Okay, so it will take in action the next time that we run it. Now we like to move the gmvideo.mp4 file to the temp directory because this will be indication for Python to start converting some files. And the second that I'm doing it, we should be waiting a few seconds until it recognizes the changes. And you can see that we have a failure. Now I already see that it complains about this path and it probably because um, it, try, it assumes that the temp directory is um, created inside the mp3 files, but that is not really the case. Since if we go to the mp3 files directory, then you can see that we really don't have a, the temp directory and Python is not going to assume that it's going to create the subdirectories along the way. That is not how the OS library works. So this means that whenever uh, this path is being a uh, built, we need to only cut the file name so that it could be inside mp3 files and then directly the name of the in file.mp3. And if we scroll up, we could actually see from where the error comes. So if we take a look around here until we see a familiar file. Okay, so here is the file that we see the exception because I started to looking into the traceback and then the exception is here, which is calling a function from here and then here. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look what we have made wrong here. And it's probably the destination full path variable that we built wrong because we only need to bring in the destination directory, which again is mp3 files, like I said, but we can't join the um, file name to it because it includes the temp directory like you see here. So we are going to cut only the base name. The base name will be the only the file name. So this means that we are going to go ahead and say um, file base name is equal to os.path.base name and I'm just going to pass in the received argument, which is the file name. And now I'm only going to take this and replace this with that because this will be responsible to pass in that part and not that part, okay? So now if we run our program, and to be honest, it's a great idea to moving the uh, gym video back so that we could um, start uh, having changes in the temp directory. Now we don't have anything but we are going to start our program. You can see the print line, and then we are going to move the gym video to the temp directory. And you can see that now it works because it identifies where it should write the mp3 file. And you can see that the file is right there. You can see the video length, 134, pretty much same like the mp4 file, like you see here. And that is nice. That is a wonderful start to our uh, project Python with Docker. And this might be the part that you'd like to test this in a few more uh, steps. So this means that if I take this and copy it three more times, then let's make it work a bit, okay? So you can see that it identified three changes and then we have three new mp3 files. You can see that all of them are here just as expected, okay? No surprises. So it really works well and now we could go ahead and take this Python script to be deployed as a Docker container and this will really uh, ensure that it will always run in the background, which is pretty smooth and cool to have on your system. 
Alright, so now that we have finished the Python part, let's go ahead and focus on deploying this as a container on our system. Now I'm going to assume that you have Docker installed on your computer right now and that you have a bit of knowledge about how Docker works. And maybe you want to consider watching my Docker getting started video before continuing on to that part. And I also have a great amount of videos on Docker in general which is a Docker playlist with a lot of tutorials. So link in the description, of course, you can go ahead and watch. All right, so let's go and create the Docker file. And of course, it's going to be named as it is. You don't want to really name it in another way because that is the convention how to call your Docker file, the file that defines what image we are going to use and what other configurations we are going to add to it. So we are going to start by defining which image we are going to use. So it's going to be Python and we use 3.11 in this project so we will use it and then we will add the prefix of and as you can see there is a nice plugin in this PyCharm that automatically knows the available images when I started writing Python 3.11. So I'm going to use the slim version in order to not download too heavy image to my system. And right after that, we are going to define an environment variable that is very common in Docker files that are running Python projects. So it's going to be Python unbuffered. And then we are going to set this to one. That basically ensures that the logs are going to be streamed immediately and not um, by a small amount of delay because that is the default behavior with Python. You might try to run a project like um, Django without setting this environment variable and you will encounter a situation that you will see the logs every X minutes and that ensures that the logs are streamed immediately to the standard output. All right, so now that we define that, then we are going to define our working directory here. We are going to go ahead and say work dir is going to be forward slash app. And this also ensures creating the directory inside the container. So we are good. And then we are going to copy everything from the host to the container itself. Now, since we defined this as a working directory, then it is going to copy these inside the forward slash app directory. So we are going to do that. And then we're gonna need to go ahead and run this project. Now, before we actually run our project, we need to remember that this project is going to run in an isolated environment, which means an isolated container. So this means that we have to come up with an approach to install our dependencies. And if you remember in the beginning of our project, we did actually install some important libraries like the movie Pi. So this means that we need to define it as our requirements so i'm going to do that okay i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to go and create the requirements.txt file right in the same directory of the in docker file and then i'm going to type in here our requirements and it's going to be only movie pi like that and of course if you extend this project and you do something for example with the request library then you need to include this here as well and rebuild your image. All right, so now before we actually run our project with the entry point command, so let's go ahead and define the running step. We are going to create an entry point and then we are going to say, please execute Python main.py like that. And we are going to go to that line here right in between and we are going to um, install our requirements. So we will say pip install dash dash upgrade pip first. Maybe we want to upgrade the pip to the latest version. And then I'm going to use the end sign twice for allowing myself to write one more command in the same line. And then I'm going to go ahead and say pip install dash our requirements dot txt like that. And this will ensure installing all the dependencies. And now we can visit our terminal to build the image and try to run our container and see what will be the results. All right, so we are going to say inside our terminal docker build dot and then we are going to tag this with mp3 converter like that. 
And that's a meaningful name to tag by our image. So we are going to start building and then it's going to install the dependencies, which is only the input MoviePy library. Okay, so now that we finished building, then we could actually try to run this container. Now, to be honest, we could already start thinking about some failure points in this program if I was to go ahead and run our container. So the first thing is the fact that now that the project runs inside a container, then it is going to use a totally different file system because the image that we've built here is obviously based on a Linux based image. Python uses a Linux distribution named Alpine and that is a completely different file system. You can also get that from the working directory that we created. In the root directory, we created the forward slash app directory. So how we are going to handle this, how we are going to enable watching the directory so that if we throw files to there, then it will start converting to mp3 files. Well, one way we could do that is for sure changing the configuration in our main.py file. And if you remember, the main.py file uses the class of dear monitor, and then we pass in the directory that we like to watch. So now we need to assume that this directory is going to be a directory inside a container because we no longer have access, so called, to the files and directories inside the host because we'd like to run this project inside a container. So what I'm going to do here, I'm basically going to change this to forward slash app and then I'm going to change this to mp3 underscore q like that. And we could ensure creating this directory once the container is starting. So the way that we are going to do that is define it inside our docker file. If you remember, we specified that our working directory is forward slash app, but down below, we could actually go right after copying everything. We could say run make dir and then we could just use the same value like we used in the dir monitor. All right. So this means that now we have to rebuild our image. So let's do that very quickly. I'm going to bring the command and I'm going to run it because we also changed the docker file and we changed the main.py file and of course, this requires rebuilding our image. Okay, so now that our image is ready, then we could go ahead and run our container. Now, we still have one more challenge to solve here, and it is the fact that by the end of the day, I want to do the drag and drop to the directories inside our Windows machine. But we can't do that to a container's file system, right? Because it doesn't have a graphical user interface. Our containers are not having a graphical user interface so that we could go and drag and drop files. So the way that we are going to overcome this is by mounting the directory that we told our program to watch and we could mount it to a directory inside a host. And if you never heard about mounting directories in Docker, then I really recommend watching my Docker volumes tutorial that I released recently. So the command overall is going to look like this. We are going to run and we are going to specify that our container name is going to be mp3 converter and i'm also going to go ahead and use the dash v flag and here we are going to specify the directories that we'd like to mount so we are going to use the colon sign and on the left pane we need to specify the host directory and on the right pane the containers directory so we already know the containers directory it's going to be app mp3 q like the following and then I'm going to write a directory inside my Windows machine that I'd like to throw the mp4 files to there. So it's going to be this directory for me. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and say, so I'll refer to my C drive. It's going to be slash mnt slash C. Remember that I'm using WSL, so it might be confusing that I'm writing in Linux conventions. So we will say YouTube and then mp3 underscore q and that is a directory that i really have you can see that i'm having this directory and here is the folder itself right there okay so now i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to run this container and of course we forgot to specify the image name itself so it will be right here we could go ahead and say 
mp3 converter this was the tag that we assigned to our image okay so you can see that it says the mp3 converter starts so now what is left to test here is basically throwing files to this directory that i showed you earlier on okay so i'm going to throw an 18 megabyte file here and let's see the results All right, so you can definitely see that our program works because we started to see logs about how it's going to start writing the uh, files and we could notice how it creates the mp3 files directory right in the root directory of the container so that is going to be an easy fix in the python side and we are going to add the slash app slash mp3 q folder so that it will create the directory here in c youtube mp3 q which is the mounted directory all right so if we go to our mp3 conv.py file we could actually see the directory that is created for the mp3 files output and you can see that it joins the current directory with the mp3 files so that was a minor bug that we had on our project and we need to give here the slash app slash mp3 q directory and that will ensure that our files will be visible to us, to the mounted directory. So the easiest way to do this is to move the variable that indicates about the forward slash app directory to a common location so that we could refer to this variable from two different Python files. And in these cases, I really like to go ahead and just create another Python file that basically indicates some variables that are rarely going to change. And I also have an explanation on that on my Python project structure video. So I'm going to go ahead and say here constants. And here I will store um, the variables that are critical for multiple Python files. So I'm going to go ahead and say container directory or it could be any other meaningful um, name that indicates about the directory and i will say forward slash app forward slash mp3 q like that and then i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to say from or i could just say import constants and then i could pass this variable here as the reference from the constants so i could say constants.container directory and then i could do the same from the mp3 converter file. I could go ahead and refer to that. And of course we need to import this as well. So I will say import constants like that. And this should be enough to really have the full functionality of our program. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to simply say control C, which will ensure just stopping our container and then I'm going to rebuild our image. I'm going to say dot and then dash the mp3 converter. All right, so once this is completed, then I could um, basically run the container. But before that, we need to delete the container from our leftover containers. So I actually listed all the containers that um, basically ever executed on this system. And you can see that it is still here on exited status. So I have to go ahead and say docker rm and then specify the container name, which is p3 converter. Okay, so now that we have done this, then I'm going to say control R for searching for the history of the commands that I ever executed. And then I'm going to find all the commands that use the mp3 converter. And then I'm going to press on control R again, and then again, you can see that this was the command that we used. So I'll press on enter here. Okay, so mp3 converter starts. So this is a good result. And then we are going to do one more test here. I am simply going to drop again another mp4 file. All right, so this time I really see the output. I see the directory of, of mp3 files and I really see my mp3 um, folder file here, which is a perfect result. And I could of course do this with a lot of files now. So I will go back and then I will start throwing some more files.
All right, so you can see that it starts to work, okay? So there are more files to process and you can see that we have four MP3 files there as well. So it works really perfectly now. And now let's go ahead and add a few more finishing touches so that this will be a perfect background project on your system. So first of all, we don't like the idea of always going to the terminal and run the container with the following command. And more than that, it could have been much nicer if this container would run in the background so that we don't have to have a hanged up um, terminal that is simply uh, the way it is. And the only way to get out of this is to press on Ctrl C, which will stop our container and we don't want it. So again, I'm going to remove the leftover here with Docker RM. But this time, I do recommend adding these two um, flags. So we will go to the very beginning of our command and we will say dash D for run this in detach mode. And in addition, we will specify that we we'll like to restart this container always, even if some exception occurs. So I will go ahead and say restart equals to always like the following and this is one of the flags that will ensure that this container will always be up when an, a problem happens or when the docker desktop starts on your system on your windows system or it could be a mac so now if i run it then you can see that it is going to run perfectly in the background and i don't really have to deal with it and you can now go ahead and again start throwing some files we did not really change the directories so it should probably work the same, of course. And another thing that I really like to configure on my system is running Docker desktop immediately once my computer boots up. So the way that we can do this is to open up the startup apps in system settings menu. And I'm going to bring my settings from a, for my computer. You can see that I already have some a, services that I use, meaning some applications on the startup. And if you enable Docker Desktop Launcher with on here, then it is basically going to uh, run on your boot. Now I do know that uh, it says here high impact and that might be something that you'd like to consider maybe doing or not doing. But the bottom line is that once you enable this and you have restart always configured with the detach mode on your container, then it is always going to be available for you when your computer boots up. And I think that this is very smooth to um, have on your system. Having always a background application that does something valuable like converting MP4 files to MP3 files could be something very, very nice. All right, so this would close out our project-based video. I really hope that you enjoyed in this one and that you learned a few more new things about Python and Docker. These are two amazing technologies that uh, really helps to uh, develop automation projects. So hit that like button if you enjoyed in here. It will really help me to spread this video to more people on YouTube and also consider subscribing if you want to watch more videos like this. I will see you in my next upload.